All right, all right. Well, today I'm on the side of the house. Uh, it's usually where I put all the, uh, where I stash away stuff, so to speak. And there's a few, a few vehicles back here, but uh, you know, some some of I'll yank parts off of long-term project. We even have an old Jeep that's been battered. It was in an accident. We haven't decided what we're going to do with it yet, but. Today, I've got a golf cart. Let me show you what I got. So there she blows in all its glory. This is a Yamaha, and it is a gas engine on it. Um, I believe it's a 1990 G2. I had, uh, I had picked this up. Well, I've had a tarp over it this whole time, and I just took it down and decided, you know what? I need to see if I can get this sucker started, you know. The guy I had it before me, he got it from a friend out in Abilene or Lubbock or something. I think it was Lubbock. And he got it from him and he toyed around it with it for a while and uh, and then it fell into my hands. Um, you can see the tires are just about new all the way around, which is good. We've got, uh, oh, if I remember, I'll have to look. I remember there was a little box. I can't remember what parts were in it. Um, and the guy I just got it from, he's the one that did the, uh, the paint job on it. And just needs a, a little TLC, doesn't it? Let's see if I can uh, open this up. And there's the little lever. You just pull on that and, uh, and the seat goes back. Well, there's the engine. It definitely needs a lot of cleanup. Uh, the battery, I took off the battery when I very first got this thing uh, to see if it will hold a charge. And sure enough, it does. And it's a huge, it's a case battery, like a thousand cold cranking amp. Um, huge battery so I'm gonna put a normal battery in it this time but that battery alone was probably worth what I bought this thing for you know uh, but I can see it's a Yamaha four-stroke let's see yeah and there was the serial number down there and it's usually where they're located either here over here you know somewhere back here on the frame uh, if you're ever wondering what it is that you have, you can get online and look, um, and they give pointers on where to find the uh, identification tag. And in this case, this one showed up as a 1990 uh, G2. And I don't know what size that engine is. That's one thing I haven't looked into yet. Uh, and I have not tried to crank it. So I think, I just wanna get this sucker running. Um, I'll get it running back here so that I can drive it and pull up to my usual workstation, you know? Uh, I know we pushed this thing around and got it in here. I'm, if I remember right, it, it's not that heavy, it's not, it's, it's not hard to push around, but I would like to get it running and then, you know, see where we go from there. So I guess the first thing, I'm going to put a battery in it, um, see if it'll crank over. Because I have no idea what's going to happen here. Uh, the gas, I don't know if there's gas in here at all or in how old it is. But I'll go through the usual. I'm going to put a battery in it, see if it'll crank over. And we'll go from there, you know. If it does crank over but won't start, maybe we'll check and see if it makes sure there's spark. I mean, we'll go through the whole troubleshooting deal and uh, see if we can get everything going. Because everything, everything's here. I mean, there's the solenoid for the for the starter. God, look at the size of that starter. That thing's huge. And the carburetor, I have no idea. 
This is the choke here, right? And it goes around. Ah, the choke cable is uh, is shot. This, I think that, yeah. So that's the forward and reverse. I do believe. And the intake has a pretty sizable air filter on it. Yeah. So, well, let's get started. Well, I'm gonna try just a tractor. Lawn tractor battery. Let's see if this will be enough to start it up. Oh, these are the regular, uh, the round posts. Maybe I can. So, what are these wires? So this was an add-on. Looks like there's the negative, positive. I'm sure it went back over there. Where's that going? It's going all the way to the front here. It looks like yeah, they had some uh, a bundle of wires here up under the dash. They had something there. Oh, I bet it was for lights. Here, I'll show you in a second. Let me get this sucker connected. I don't know if that's, uh, I'll have to get my multimeter. But just out of curiosity, I'm going to see what it does with the key. Yeah. So this guy, yeah. So the key, that's a, a cat branded little helmet. So this guy must have something to do with uh, Cat, with Caterpillar. He has the, uh, the key ring and that huge battery was a Caterpillar. But uh, let's see what happens here. Yeah, I'm not getting anything. So, what's next? I'm going to get my multimeter and make sure there's power getting everywhere. Alright, so... 13 volts, 13.1, so it is fully charged. Um, let's check back here. Yeah, 13, so that's good to go. What else can we check? This is coming from the ignition. This is Okay, so that's what I thought. What I'm doing, I kept trying to just turn the ignition switch on. Uh, but I forgot with these, you turn the, the key on, then you have to press the gas pedal down uh, to start it. And I need to make sure it's in neutral. Which I have no idea. This thing seems frozen. So I'm assuming straight up and down with this lever is neutral. And you go one way for forward, the opposite way for reverse. So let's crank this up. Alright, 
So what next? I think I'm going to uh, take the air breather off and off the carburetor and spray some uh, carb cleaner directly through and see if it'll fire off. If not, then we well, need to check for spark. Alright, so the choke is open. And it looks like it's just going to be stuck there because the cable's all Well, that's great. It's going too good so far. I uh, guess I can clean some more in here. I need to check the gas. Here is a fuel pump. Let me check and see if there's any gas getting to this at all. If not, maybe we can just you know, get some gas in there, crank her up, and see what it does. Okay, so it's kind of hard to let me show you what I'm doing. Here on the side of the tank, there's the, the fuel pump. And so I disconnected it from the carb. And let me see if I can try to crank it and see if fuel is going to spurt through there. That way I can check, one, if there's fuel in it. And two, make sure the uh, fuel pump is working. pumping fuel but I can smell it it's pretty bad uh, but at least we know the fuel pumps working Well, I know it's running kind of crappy, but I think it's enough to uh, move us around. Yeah, it's hard to tell how much gas is in there. I have no idea. You can't see anything there, and there's no... There's no level, no nothing. So, uh... Well, I guess, <laughs> I guess I'm going to just crank her up and see if I can uh, move it over to my, to my work area.
So I guess the first thing I'm going to do is uh, hose this sucker down, get the engine cleaned off. So I noticed when I, I went down the street, pulled it in, it seemed like there was some noise. Uh, the steering was kind of shaky, and this side seemed like it was uh, wobbling a little bit. So let me check the steering linkage and the tie rods and everything on that thing. Uh, the rear seemed okay, but when I was pushing it backwards, I could hear a, a scrape. It sounded like it was the brakes, and the brakes seemed to stick. You know, when I put the brake down, it stays there. You can see I have to yank it back up. So, so yeah, I just think a, a lot of cleanup here, and uh, Little WD-40 here and there to loosen things up. Let me open this thing up again. There we go. Yeah, so I'm going to clean all this stuff up under here before I work on it. And looks like that little lawn tractor battery was enough to start it, so... And the only thing I think it needs is the choke. Maybe that's why. Uh, maybe that's why he couldn't couldn't get it started. This guy, you can tell he he wasn't that mechanically inclined at all. And when the clo when the uh, when the choke cable cable broke like that, so there's no choke on this anymore, and he couldn't get it started. The only way I started it, I sprayed you know carb cleaner directly down into it to prime it. And it's starting right up now. Um, so maybe that was the only problem. Huh? Who knows? But it's actually running okay. Uh, I took it down the street. It's kind of slow. I'm going to have to get my camera out and, uh, and clock the miles per hour on GPS. It couldn't have been 20 miles an hour tops, you know. But let's uh, let's get this sucker cleaned up. All right, so I got it in here. Had to uh, squeeze it in, but I got it in. <laughs> you can see. I don't know if you can see that on the on the video. I'll put the clip on there. But while I was going down the street, I was clocking. Uh, how fast it was going through the GPS and it was doing a whopping 14 miles an hour. Woohoo! So, what to do now? I mean, it's running. There's some sticky points, uh, especially the forward and reverse lever. And I think I'm just gonna, you know, get some WD-40 and oil some stuff down and free it up. Uh, what else? The brake. Uh, it's starting to work its way loose, but it, it breaks fine. But when you let off, the, the pedal stays down, and I have to you know pull it back up. And but the last time I did it, now it started to come back. So I think if we just you know just clean everything up and oil it down, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, I sure would like to make it faster, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks much better since I hosed it down, and I took that back off. Um, it's easier to work with the choke, but I'll be, I will be fixing that. I mean, it's a simple cable, but right in here, I'm just going to see if I can't, uh, I'm running out of, running out of my special WTF 40. work that around let's see where's the uh, there's the part of the brake cable right here but let me go over here and work this lever around see if we can't get it to Just 
still tight, but much easier already. All right, well, that was no big deal. And here's all these wires. Um, they went straight to the battery with it. And I will bet you, yeah, and here's a little a switch. This was probably for some headlights that they put on. Yeah, there's some brackets right here. And that's what all that is down there. What is that piece? Oh, that came off of here. thing I noticed when I was taking a left turn yeah you can see where the tire is is hitting that mud flap back there can you see kind of see daylight through it and let's compare it to this side here yeah so it's offset it's much closer on this side for some reason so I'll have to take a look at that Maybe I'll spray down some of the uh, the brake components here and see if we can loosen that up. All right, well, I got everything oiled down. It's definitely uh, rotating better, but you can see this is the only thing that's broken here is the, the choke cable. And I can pull the choke when I hold this up, I can pull it and you can see the choke will come on, but it just won't come back off. You have to manually uh, pull it out. This thing is snapped off, so the little knob in front just won't do anything. You can pull it, but you can't shut it off. So, uh, maybe that's the whole reason why the guy couldn't, uh, couldn't get it started. He just couldn't, there was no choke, you know? And, uh... And he gave up on it. But, so, kind of an easy fix. I was expecting a little more. Um, but it cleaned up nicely. I just oiled that up and I oiled the, the brake lever there and the spring behind it. And this I'll have to take, I was trying to take a look and see if there's anything obvious. Of course, you can you can see the, the tire. Uh... The alignment's off, but I don't know why this side is so much closer to the body. That's that's what's going to get me. Um, if I'm looking under here. I don't see anything. Doesn't look like anything was hit or bent, or was it? Looks like it was bent or hit a few times, but on this side, yeah, you can see up here too. But I don't know if that uh, if that bent the the control arms or not. Doesn't look like it, does it? But I guess that'll come another day because after looking at this, I'm probably going to put a lift kit on it, right? <laughs> and once I do that, I can really take a close look at this. Yeah, and check this out. This is the battery that was in it. Caterpillar, 1,000 cold cranking amps. Freaking awesome. And it's been holding a charge very nicely. So... 
I have another tractor I'm going to be working on. I might have to slip that one in there. I think the tractor has a 700 or 750, and I don't know the condition of it, so perfect timing. I might be able to use this one on, on the tractor. But man, for the cost of that battery and new tires all the way around, that was worth just hands down what I gave for this. Not bad for a couple hundred dollars, right? Yeah, so I guess that's it for this video. I thought for sure it was going to take a lot more to get this thing started. Um, I just got lucky, I guess. Uh, the guy was not a mechanic, and and that's my only guess is is the choke. You know, <laughs> I don't see anything else that would keep this thing from running. Once I sprayed it with uh, carb cleaner in there and uh, and primed it, and it cranked right up and now it's cranking up you know uh, fairly easily actually even with the choke off so so I guess that's what I'll do I'll probably just get a new cable and I'll probably start looking into a lift kit and what else I can soup this up because it's uh it sure seemed kind of slow out there on the street uh, <laughs> 14 miles an hour tops I just got to decide what I'm gonna do with this thing what do you think you know let me know what you what what ideas you have and uh and we'll see what we can do with this thing all right well that's it for this video so as always you know be sure to like it uh subscribe and we'll see you on the next video what's up kitty <laughs>